Second time. Second time already. Okay. Well, I've seen it in theaters, but this is my first time seeing it on TV. Really important. <laughs> so you guys kind of know the storyline and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. There's a, there's this underwater guy. He's a big, he invades Wakanda, and then there's this Iron Man looking girl. Okay, well, let's not go through all of them because some people haven't seen it. Okay? I just want to make sure that I'm not going to tell you stuff that you're already tired of hearing about. Okay, I kind of just wanted to give you a sense of... Um, you know, what some of this was all about, why we were doing it, and why some of us think it's really important, right? First, I mean, beyond the question of if you've seen it or not, have you seen many movies where they have indigenous communities in them, where they have Mayan people in them, where they have Aztec people in them? Have you seen many of those movies on the big screen? Like what? Give me an example. Mm. Where? History documentaries. <laughs> <laughs> History documentaries. Okay. Bill Gibson's movie. Uh, there's a terrible movie out there that we won't mention by name, yeah. yeah I forgot its name. <laughs> but not a whole lot, right? Like, you see all kinds of European culture. Lilo and Stitch. Lilo and Stitch is Hawaii, so almost. Indigenous. Indigenous, indigenous, yeah, good. But so one of the things that was really important was that we were going to talk about a community, a culture, that came from indigenous Mesoamerica. Indigenous Yucatan. Under, underwater. And before they go underwater. And that's really important because we wanted to make sure that when we did this, we represented the community in a way that they would feel connected to and they would feel um, proud of. I thought they were underwater. <laughs> they will be underwater, but not yet. So the idea is how do we connect to them? How do we present something that folks are going to feel connected to? That is not going to be just a prop. Because too many times a community will, be sh will show up in a movie and they'll just be there to look good or to look exotic or to look different. And we didn't want to do that with... Um, with Dabokan. So one of the things, underwater. Which is un, which is underwater. So one of the things that we wanted to do was we wanted to balance what's in the comic books and what's in history. Right? Have you read them or no? Yeah. So one of the things we wanted to do was make sure that we were connected to the comic books. Do you know anything about the comic books that Namor comes from? Uh, oh no no which one? Is it like the older ones? Why are you yeah, they're pretty old. Really? Do you know where Namor comes from in the original comics? What's that? Huh? Do you know where Namor comes from in the original comics? Who? No. Namor? Namor. You guys know who Namor is? No. I don't know who Namor is either. All right. Uh, this is going to be fun. Uh, You're going to learn a lot. Uh, he come, a lot of people say he comes from Atlantis. Uh, he, comes from, he comes from issue one. <laughs> from comics issue one. Yeah. yeah, he's one of the very first comic book characters. And they say he comes from Atlantis, he comes from underwater. So in the comic books, they already had this whole idea of what these figures were going to be like. But then, Ryan Coogler, who wrote and directed this movie, wanted to make him connected to Mesoamerica. So then you're going to say, well, how do we balance what is in the comic books that people want to see, because they know the comics, and how do we balance this new storyline that's coming out of Mexico? I wasn't alive when those were created. That's right. So one of the things that they wanted to do was they wanted to make sure they were connected to the comics, which shows that everybody in the underwater world is actually blue-skinned. They look like avatars to me. They look like avatars. They're all blue-skinned. And so in this film, sometimes they have blue skin, but sometimes they don't. And that was one of the decisions we made, right? Why would they have blue skin? Well, that's part of the adaptation of going to water. Well, on the surface, they were, they were blue, but underwater, they were like us. That's right, exactly. So when they're out, when they're exposed to air, they have to wear a breathing apparatus because they can't breathe air. But when they're underwater, they're still brown. And that's one of the things that we talked a lot about. Because we wanted to say, we're going to be connected to the comics, that means they're going to have blue skin. But we want it to make sense, so we want it to feel right. And so the, the decision was, when you're coming from an indigenous community, and you leave that community to go because you have to migrate to another country, because you have to... Um, leave to the city, you no longer get to feel like yourself, right? You but don't feel like everybody interacts with you the same way you are, same way you interact at home. Well, in right? the movie here, he acts like a bad guy, but in the comics, he's like a good guy or something. Yeah, he's kind of both. Well, so let me finish this, and I'll take questions in a minute. Okay. So then, if we have, do any of you guys ever feel different when you go to school or when you go away out of your home from how you well, feel at home? No. Do you feel the same everywhere you go, no matter where you are? No. Some of you, yes, some of you, no. So if you, if you feel different in some place, where do you feel different? Um, at a shoe store. 
Does everybody feel comfortable like they're at home when they're at a shoe store? Yes. Mm-hmm. Why? Because <laughs> 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 you're scared of some of the stuff that's there. No. Other people might compare to Other people might. So then you're comparing what you have to what other people have. Do you ever feel like you're in a place where you don't have what everybody else has? No. <laughs> No, you always feel like you have everything. Yeah. Right? So this is one of the things we're trying to get at, is that sometimes you don't feel like you're seen and you're just like everybody else. And they capture that by saying, when you're outside, you have blue skin, because people don't see you who you really are. But when you're at home, underwater, Dalokan, then you're with your people and people see you as you are. And so those are the kinds of issues that we tried to build into the script itself, so that it would be more meaningful than just a shoot 'em up movie that you see all the time. Shoot, shoot, shoot. So I only have one last point for you, and I'm gonna ask all of you to look at me for a second to make sure that you understand what I'm saying. I want you to watch this movie and look for those kinds of messages. There's more than just the surface. There's all kinds of storylines that are underneath the surface that tell you about our culture and where we come from. All right? So do that for me, please. Otherwise, I'm happy to take questions. Wait, when, how do you get this symbol? I've never... That is a great question. Does anybody I had, know? I had that question. <laughs> I 100% had that question. So one, <laughs> one day, so I was getting emails and texts and WhatsApp messages from Ryan Kugler all the time. And one time it was like, Dr. Aldana, we just need a greeting. What is a Mesoamerican greeting? And I was like, I don't know, you know, nod with the head. Like, what, is it, like in, what do you do when you're in Central America? You just greet people. So then, he, so then the point was that everybody knows this is Wakanda forever. And so the actors, Tenoch Huerta, Mabel Cadena, they were like, hey, we need something like Wakanda forever, but for Tan So they went to Ryan, and Ryan came to me, and I said, okay, let me see what I can find. And if you look, there's a whole bunch of codex representations. These are Mesoamerican books. Oh. And they have figures who are always standing like this. And so I said, we could do something like that where we would a- adapt from what we get from the codex. So that's another example of how these things I also like how a tomb up here is an ant or something. That's right. That's another example of how they all kind of come together. We're not making this stuff up, but we're not just copying it. Either. Any other questions? How is he a good guy and a bad guy in both? How both? That's a great question. How is he a good guy and a bad guy? Does anybody understand how you can be a good guy and a bad guy at the same time? Yes. A broken hero? A broken hero. An anti-hero? An anti-hero. Wow. These are very good examples, right? So yeah, sometimes... I see these with like characters like Wolverine, Venom, and like... <laughs> yeah, you want to protect something that's really important to you, and so that may put you against somebody else, and they think you're the bad guy when you're really just trying to protect what's important to you. Yes, because they try to attack, like, their real... Like, underwater, they didn't, like, they... Uh, I don't think I should say that. No, that's exactly right. They're trying to take their resources. They're trying to take what they have that's important to their community and, and take it away from them. And so they have to defend that. All right, are we ready for the movie? Yes, I'm just going to make a little movie. <laughs> oh, maybe one more question? Yeah, I have a question. So, I've, since you're in the movie, can you tell us how we can pay oh, attention guy. to that section of the movie? I'm going to say right now that you probably won't have a hard time finding it. Are you the agent guy? I'm not the agent guy. <laughs> but I I'm think sorry. you, I, I, I'm pretty sure you won't have one. Yeah. Oh, All right. Yeah, okay. right. And so everyone, in addition to the pizza, we have cookies and fruit and some kind bars in the back.